At that time, Abijah, son of Jeroboam, fell sick. Jeroboam said to his wife, Go, disguise yourself so that it will not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh, for the prophet Ahijah is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She set out and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. But the Lord said to Ahijah, The wife of Jeroboam was coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her. When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with heavy tidings for you. Go, tell Jeroboam. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Because I exalted you from among the people, made you leader over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David to give it to you. Yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart, doing only that which was right in my sight. But you have done evil above all those who were before you, and have gone and made for yourself other gods, and cast images, provoking me to anger." and have thrust me behind your back. Therefore, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. I will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free, in Israel, and will consume the house of Jeroboam, just as one burns up dung until it is all gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And anyone who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. For the Lord has spoken. Therefore set out, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. All Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. For he alone of Jeroboam's family shall come to the grave. Because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today, even right now. The Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their ancestors and scatter them beyond the Euphrates, because they have made their sacred poles, provoking the Lord to anger. He will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and which he caused Israel to commit. Then Jeroboam's wife got up and went away, and she came to Tirzah. As she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. All Israel buried him and mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant, the prophet Ahijah. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred and how he reigned, are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. The time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years. Then he slept with his ancestors, and his son Nadab succeeded him. Now Rehoboam, son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama, the Ammonite. Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed, more than all that their ancestors had done. For they also built for themselves high places, pillars, and sacred poles on every high hill and under every green tree. There were also male temple prostitutes in the land. They committed all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, King Shishak of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. 
He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made shields of bronze instead and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. As often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? There was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his ancestors and was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama, the Ammonite. His son Abijam succeeded him. 1 Kings chapter 15 verses 1 through 24. Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam son of Nebat, Abijam began to reign over Judah. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micah, daughter of Abishalom. He committed all the sins that his father did before him. His heart was not true to the Lord his God, like the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem, setting up his son after him and establishing Jerusalem, because David did what was right in the sight of the Lord and did not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. The war begun between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continued all the days of his life. The rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah. There was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. Abijam slept with his ancestors and they buried him in the city of David. Then his son Asa succeeded him. In the twentieth year of King Jeroboam of Israel, Asa began to reign over Judah. He reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maka, daughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. He put away the male temple prostitutes out of the land and removed all the idols that his ancestors had made. He also removed his mother, Maka, from being queen mother, because she had made an abominable image for Asherah. Asa cut down her image and burned it at the Wadi Kidron. But the high places were not taken away. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was true to the Lord all his days. He brought into the house of the Lord the votive gifts of his father and his own votive gifts, silver, gold, and utensils. There was war between Asa and King Baasha of Israel all their days. King Baasha of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah to prevent anyone from going out or coming in to King Asa of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and gave them into the hands of his servants. King Asa sent them to King Ben-Hadad, son of Tabrimon, son of Hezion, of Aram, who resided in Damascus, saying, Let there be an alliance between me and you, like that between my father and your father. I am sending you a present of silver and gold. Go, break your alliance with King Baasha of Israel, so that he may withdraw from me. Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel. He conquered Ajon, Dan, Abel-Beth Meaka, and all Chinneroth, with all the land of Naphtali. When Baasha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah and lived in Tirzah. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah. None was exempt. They carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber, with which Baasha had been building. With them, King Asa built Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. Now the rest of all the acts of Asa, all his power, 
all that he did, and the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? But in his old age he was diseased in his feet. Then Asa slept with his ancestors, and was buried with his ancestors in the city of his father David. His son Jehoshaphat succeeded him. 1 Kings chapter 15 verses 25 through 34 Nadab, son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of King Asa of Judah. He reigned over Israel two years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of his ancestor and in the sin that he caused Israel to commit. Baasha, son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Baasha struck him down at Gibethon, which belonged to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel were laying siege to Gibethon. So Baasha killed Nadab in the third year of King Asa of Judah, and succeeded him. As soon as he was king, he killed all the house of Jeroboam. He left to the house of Jeroboam not one that breathed, until he had destroyed it, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite, because of the sins of Jeroboam that he committed and that he caused Israel to commit, and because of the anger to which he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? There was war between Asa and King Baasha of Israel all their days. In the third year of King Asa of Judah, Baasha, son of Ahijah, began to reign over all Israel at Tirzah. He reigned twenty-four years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam and in the sin that he caused Israel to commit. 1 Kings chapter 16 The word of the Lord came to Jehu, son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying, Since I exalted you out of the dust and made you leader over my people Israel, and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have caused my people Israel to sin, provoking me to anger with their sins, therefore I will consume Baasha and his house and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Anyone belonging to Baasha who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat, and any one of his who dies in the field, the birds of the air shall eat. Now the rest of the acts of Baasha, what he did, and his power, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Baasha slept with his ancestors and was buried at Tirzah, and his son Ella succeeded him. Moreover, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, against Baasha and his house, both because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, in being like the house of Jeroboam, and also because he destroyed it. In the twenty-sixth year of King Asa of Judah, Ella, son of Baasha, began to reign over Israel in Tirzah. He reigned two years. But his servant Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him. When he was at Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, who was in charge of the palace at Tirzah, Zimri came in and struck him down and killed him in the twenty-seventh year of King Asa of Judah, and succeeded him. When he began to reign, as soon as he had seated himself on the throne, he killed all the house of Baasha. He did not leave him a single male of his kindred or his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the house of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Baasha by the prophet Jehu. Because of all the sins of Baasha and the sins of his son Ella that they had committed, and that they caused Israel to commit, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Ella and all that he did, 
are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? In the twenty-seventh year of King Asa of Judah, Zimri reigned seven days in Tirzah. Now the troops were encamped against Gibethon, which belonged to the Philistines. And the troops who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and he has killed the king. Therefore all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. So Omri went up from Gibethon, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. When Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the king's house. He burned down the king's house over himself with fire, and died, because of the sins that he committed, doing evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam, and for the sin that he committed, causing Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri, and the conspiracy that he made, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, son of Ganath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri overcame the people who followed Tibni, son of Ganath. So Tibni died, and Omri became king. In the thirty-first year of King Asa of Judah, Omri began to reign over Israel. He reigned for twelve years, six of them in Tirzah. He bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver. He fortified the hill and called the city that he built Samaria, after the name of Shemer, the owner of the hill. Omri did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did more evil than all who were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and in the sins that he caused Israel to commit, provoking the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger by their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Omri that he did, and the power that he showed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Omri slept with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria. His son Ahab succeeded him. In the thirty-eighth year of King Asa of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, began to reign over Israel. Ahab, son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty-two years. Ahab, son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, he took as his wife Jezebel, daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal, and worshipped him. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. Ahab also made a sacred pole. Ahab did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, Then had all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segeb, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, son of Nun.